we are super excited to be joined by, I'm going to say, our new BFF. That's not too bold, <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Juliana Virant. Am I, did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah. Good. I, I realise I've never Welcome. actually asked you how you pronounce your surname. Yeah. I so. thought it was Flight. <laughs> <laughs> Juliana Flight from Flight. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Yeah, live in the studio. Live yeah. in the studio. We've got a load of, um, I think I'm just trying to use the word that Juliana used, cheesy, I think. I think she said geeky. Geeky, geeky questions <laughs> <laughs> coming up. Um, and we've got a game which I haven't told her about, of dare darts, mm-hmm. about okay. to happen as well. Exciting. What are we using as um, punishment for the dare darts? Well, it was going to be shots, but as we've just done shots before the interview... <laughs> 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 who knows who knows what we're going to do um, but it's questions still... questions of the dares okay yeah. yeah Sam's got a whole bunch that aren't on screen that you can't see yet of um, quick dare fire questions. quick fire dare darts Even questions more questions yes yeah. nice. but let's um, let's start at the beginning so this I think this is you know an easy one could be lengthy but we'll just cut that out so don't worry yeah if you were trapped on a desert island, yeah, we've got three questions. The first one is, which ukulele would you want to be trapped with? Of course, the ultra serious, <laughs> the super <laughs> amazing <laughs> travel ukulele, fully fully carbonate. You can go with it underwater. I don't know who actually I'd plays under. If I want to play underwater, I could we will that. be testing yeah. that out. It, yeah. it, upcoming video. It would be perfect. Yeah. Um, I was the first thing that sprang to my mind was who wants to be trapped on a desert island with a ukulele. <laughs> No, you know, like to pass the time, but yeah, actually, the Ultra Travel series was exa- especially designed for this kind of situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we, when we do the test on this, we are going to have to test it out on a desert island somewhere. Yeah. We, when so. we got one, like as a sample in our house, we were like, okay, we want to test it out, like before we actually make any claims online. So we had it in our garden hanging on a bush for like almost two years oh, wow. and, oh my and you know we like we live in a like continental climate so it was um minus 15 degrees in the winter time it was like snowing and then in the summer it was super hot like 30 35 degrees and it was raining on it and it's still fine it didn't oh, wow. like the neck didn't bend because like it's polycarbonate it's like it's yeah. like yeah it's ultra it's was anything rough. living in it after two years no or? no no it, it's only like the machine heads got a bit rusty because they're like still from metal, but you just yeah, like clean it plays, and it's yeah. fine. And it plays well, perfect. I think we, we can say we have got a video that's going to be coming up relatively soon where yeah. we are testing it. And we had a meeting the other day about how we're going to test it um, without giving too much away. I think we talked about explosives. We talked about helicopters. <laughs> Definitely underwater. Um, well, there's, there's, there's all sorts on there, Oh, there are a lot. I can't even remember. Burying it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think burying it was one of them, but it might be now. So back to the desert island. Back Sorry. to the desert island, yeah. Do you want to ask the next question? What is the next question? So which album would you want to listen to? So you've got a record player on this desert yeah. island. I'm going vinyl. I'm going old school for a desert island. Yeah. It doesn't have to be ukulele based. It's been, it's been washed up. It hasn't got to be ukulele based. What is the one album that you would listen to? You might be on this desert island for the rest of your life. Yeah. I actually like have quite a bit of vinyls and I think like one of my favorite ones to listen is actually Black Sabbath <laughs> but I forgot the name of the album it's like one of the first one with the cemetery you know like with the okay. picture of the graveyard okay cool you you love a bit of shredding don't you yeah in in our in our short time knowing yeah. you yeah I, I've gathered that the shredding is what uh, what yeah. does it yeah it's like Mm, I don't know how to explain it's not it doesn't have as much of an influence over like more modern metal it's like still very old yeah uh, rock so it's like rock and beginnings of like harder music so, so like, I feel like ni- it's like 1980s perfect, yeah it's like perfect mix yeah. before it got like Metallica and yeah. Nirvana and that stuff next question important question yeah you've got a chef a personal chef on, on, this, on the desert on island. this desert island <laughs> yeah. but he can only make one meal yeah. What is it? Uh, first thing that came to mind was bibimbap. 
Oh. Okay, we don't have a clue what it's Bibim a, Bop is. like um, <laughs> Korean Pokeball. Oh, oh okay. it's like Pokeball. rice and vegetables and a bit of meat wow. and a bit of eggs of everything, basically. Okay. That I like in one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that does sound good. I mean, we should say this question came up because at Cheltenham, where we met Juliana for the first time, we kind of found out that we share a love of food. Yeah. And alcohol, but food mainly. Yeah, exactly. And... Um, yeah, so we quite often we start interviews about food. Don't food we? related. We are going to eat after this, actually. We are We're going what? for Turkish. Turkish. I think we've decided on yeah. Turkish. It's close, closest by. Yeah, ten minutes away. Can't mm. wait. Lovely. Right, let's let's hurry up with this interview then, shall we? Okay. If you could put a gig on with anybody, dead or alive, who would it be? Me, a gig on. Like, but I wouldn't be playing. No, you don't have no, to you play. No, you're not to play, but you can pick you any can play artist if you, want. you like. Uh, Elvis Presley. Oh, wow, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, He's a okay. legend. Yeah. Or Michael Jackson. Ooh. Yeah. They're, they're the two dinner party guests as well, aren't they? It's a yeah. similar kind of question. And like everyone wants John Lennon, Michael Jackson, Elvis. Yeah. Okay. I'm kind of with that though, because if you could see anybody play again, like it'd be Elvis. 100%. Okay. Um, right, what is next? What's for one thing you'd always request on your tour rider? I mean, yeah. that's if you're a musician. But if you were a touring yeah. ukulele Mine is virtuoso. the, just to start this off, mine is the Red Skittles. Okay. And I have been known to request that before, and, and some places have given it to me. <laughs> oh, I have to think. I really like apples, so maybe that would oh. be that. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Juliana, you need to get out more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, can, you can have whiskey, you could have... Yeah, soju. Like, uh, oh, uh, soju. Yeah. Soju. Yeah. Yeah, soju and an apple. Yeah, soju. Okay. Soju with apple. Yeah, I think it's good. Okay, good that's, that's a cool good one. Choice, good choice. Um, <laughs> what's the one song that you never want to hear played on the ukulele again? <laughs> oh, my God. Somewhere on the, <laughs> the rainbow, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few I can think of, but yeah, somewhere yeah. in the rainbow. Because everyone there, says Riptide, but I can't get bored. Like, for me, Riptide is still fine. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like such cheery and yeah. upbeat yeah. song. Oh, yeah, so this is this is a big one, really. We should have saved this to the end. But um, have you got anything coming up? Uh, we anything have... you can give us a, just a little nibble at? You don't have to give it away, but um, any any releases happening? We have lots of stuff coming up. <laughs> mostly bigger versions of okay. yeah, of things that maybe that already exist um, so yeah that's probably going to be a famous release or some improved versions of the things that we already have okay. and some completely new things that you haven't seen from us before. <laughs> <laughs> so we have yeah. lots of things coming up the answer is everything yes, everything, everything is coming up yes. um, but please support the existing models as well yeah that leads us quite well onto our next question which is which is your favorite flight ukulele that there's, there's, there's sort of two parts to this question. There's a slightly negative part yeah. and a positive part. Which one were you... Are there, have there been any that you've been super excited about, but they didn't quite land... Like, they didn't quite sell as well as you thought yeah. they were going to? Yeah. We've got serious all of we a sudden, haven't we? we? <laughs> and, like, these ones would be, like, the... Uh, our Princess series. Like, um, I think we have a very, very cool model called Sophia. And yeah. then we have model Antonia. And I think for that money, in that price range, they're like really, really nice ukes. But for some reason, like people just maybe don't know about them. Yeah. Or they go for something else. Because like Sophia, or the, actually both of them, they have like uh, wharf strings. Mm. They have, yeah, very nice, solid tops which like make them sound well because like some people say we have a solid top but actually this sound vibes it doesn't sound very different yeah. from like non-solid top version and then Sophia has um I don't know if you heard about model D Diana probably yes yeah, yeah. yeah so Sophia is uh, like um spruce top version of that mm. so spruce is supposed to be like more open sound more bright sound so we, yeah. I think like sound wise it's like one of our best ukes but it's just virtually not known well and it's like such a yeah. shame and I think the yeah Antonio what model is like solid top mahogany uke, which satin with mm. satin finish, and it like I actually don't know the UK prices because we do most of 
things in Europe. In Euros, Congo, in Euros. But I think it's like, yeah, the price is maybe around 200 or lower. Yeah, I think, yeah. I and think the gig bag is really about the 200 yeah. mark. I and think. the gig bag is really nice. And yeah. I think they should be selling much better than they are currently selling. Yeah. But maybe they're not as flashy as our like more famous models, yeah. like the Fireball. Yeah. So that's a bit of a shame. Yeah. But yeah, we are. Um, thinking how to put more focus and promote yeah. these models more to our customers. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump in there with something that might be quite boring, but you're talking about gig bags. Yeah. I think your gig bags are the best marketing really? ploy I've seen in the ukulele world. Really? Yeah, because when you go to a festival, when we're at Cheltenham, yeah. and I think we had this conversation, but you look around and you just see red gig bag after red. Yeah. Like, uh, don't change the color too much because okay. it's like it's it's like such a good marketing yeah. thing to go yeah. like look how many flight ukuleles yeah. there are like yeah. it's immediately visible at any like big ukulele yeah, yeah, gathering yeah the thing is when we we have like lower price series and they have yeah. like a sand color gig bag so when we made the princess and royal series yeah. we wanted them to stand out so we went we thought like what is the expensive looking color oh it must be the wine red yeah, yeah. so that's like the result it, it's right. brilliant though because like i say straight away you, you can literally count how many flights there are which i think is genius anyway yeah. that was my i really i really point, enjoyed but... that actually seeing <laughs> the yeah you were yeah. like there's one i'm there i'm there yeah, <laughs> I felt, yeah I felt, cause, you know we don't really get out that much we're mostly like sitting in the office and you know working <laughs> online and we see lots of videos but when yeah when we actually go to events i think we did like just monopoleles this year in june and then we did the Cheltenham festival so when you go to these events and you see actual people with the ukuleles it's like you see direct results of your work yeah. and i think that's yeah. a pretty amazing feeling because you just see the numbers on the screen otherwise and you're like yeah. okay we saw that and know what like yeah. hundred ukuleles but when you see them yeah. when you see them all around you're yeah. like oh my goodness when you yeah. see the yeah, fighters yeah, yeah. in in the flesh yeah um, i'm going to jump in with another question now that's later on yeah. but juliana just said that they don't get out much yeah <laughs> but inside i was i was laughing i mean you're the most travel people that i've i've ever met there was your facebook story the other day was i thought it was how many of these cities have you visited and then kevin was like no it's how many of these cities have you visited this year <laughs> <laughs> it was like 37 or something it was like a list as long as your arm <laughs> no, that, that's true but at the same time i bet like we don't get out to ukulele yeah. festivals that much no um we yeah when we travel we it's like a mix of it's work vi visiting suppliers visiting customers visiting a different like places like thinking how to do yeah sometimes we just get out for like a marketing event yeah, yeah. like we did some workshops with daniel Serra yeah recently in prague and then we did some last year we did a tour with peter moss and mm. and sammy third and sammy fostering boy in the netherlands so but there's people who come there with flights yeah. but it's still like much smaller events because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like a workshop yeah. so maybe you get like 10 20 if you're lucky, yeah. like 30 people that show up. And yeah. of course, like some of them will have flight dukes. But then when going somewhere like Cheltenham, which was felt like close to 1000 people, yeah. Yeah. like completely different feeling. Yeah, I'd say there was if there's 1000 people, I'd say there was 600 flight ukuleles there. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I would. <laughs> would be nice. Yeah, well, there was a lot. There was a yeah, lot of flight dukes there. God, sorry, you yeah. can jump So back jumping in. back to sort of what we were talking about, have there been any that you weren't completely sure of and they've just like taken off like crazy i don't know i have i have to think i have to ask help from from, from the audience <laughs> <laughs> audience maya <laughs> ah, yeah. the maya yeah. yeah maya yeah true we weren't so sure about how maya is gonna work and we were like is there even market or demand for still string baritones because nobody yeah. has ever done it like on a big scale before so we ordered just a little trial yeah quantity well, and then it went and sold really quickly and then we ended up having to order more um but because it's a such um i don't want to say high end but it's a delicate instrument yeah. to make and we yeah. had to make some improvements as well to the um, to the headstock so it's like a really long process to or to get more instruments because they take at least three months to make yeah because it's like you need the lacquering you need to wait for it to dry you need to prepare the wood so it's like the whole thing and we yeah. can't just you can't like, just get them yeah, yeah. we can't yeah. be like 
I want well, hundred tomorrow. There was a lady, Vicky, from the UK Maniacs, cried. She cried when she when got she, her hands on When she got on her one. hand on the yeah. Maya at um, Cheltenham, didn't she? I the, almost cried myself. <laughs> 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 Watching that scene. <scene. laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. think, I mean, going back to the Maya, the Maya, I think, is a fantastic instrument. I can't... I'm assuming there's one behind us. There's one next. Just, yeah. We're all just looking <laughs> over there, here. No, like, nobody can see it. Is it on camera? Shall I get it? Yeah, I was delighted when you bought this out because... Certainly when we're doing baritone stuff with the band, we do it because we've got like the lower end in there, but it can disappear sound-wise, particularly when like we're recording, we're miking up, and this gives it a bit more volume, but also you can plug it in, so if you're doing distorted things, you've got steel strings, which is really nice. Um, I was amazed by this for, for the price, to be honest. Yep. I think, you know, it's an amazing price. I can't remember what it is, but again, Sam will put it up. Um, but yeah, I think it's an yeah. amazing instrument. Yeah. So I'm really pleased that that took off. Did yeah. you well? Took off. Took off. Took flight. I, I don't know. Oh. I don't know if I should spill that, but we are thinking to make more versions of steel string baritone so that we don't have okay. just mango one. Yeah. So if people have suggestions of the wood combinations, please. Oh, I think that's cool. Ooh, yeah. Leave a comment yeah. down below. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure people will, and people will cry <laughs> at the uh, the future possible baritone. So you you took off, gone. You were you were leading into. Oh, I was just gonna touch upon the where did obviously they're all aeronautical. Where mm. did that come from? Where did the idea come from for everything to be? Aeronautical related. Aeronautical related. You mean for the like, names of the yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, it's different series. So like we have the um, beginner series that we started just the numbers, then we started adding wood n names, and then we started with princess series. So actually, the princess series all have names uh, like over princesses. Princess, um, yeah, so yeah. we started with Victoria. She's like Queen Victoria. Then we yeah. had yeah, um, Diana. Sophia, we added um, yeah some more. We added even Leia because Princess Leia. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we did expanding that series. But then when we went to royal series, so we were like, okay, we need something fancier. And actually, company flight yeah. is connected to planes, aviation. So we thought, okay, what if we look at the name of the planes? The, like and. Basically, when we make a new model, we pull up a list of like military ah. combat planes, yeah. <laughs> and then we just click, we choose the more best sounding yeah. ones. So we have the Nighthawk and the Fireball and yeah. Phantom. So so all they came just because it was called Flight. Flight didn't come from any kind of aviation background or mm, history no, or no, no. Flight was just I actually yeah, the name we kind of thought of it like we wanted to have something in English but something that was easy to remember that expressed a lot of freedom yeah. and yeah. Um, stuff like that. But at the same time, that wouldn't sound Hawaiian because we are not a Hawaiian company. I've said this in interviews before. We don't want to pre like yeah. pretend that we are yeah. from somewhere where, where, where yeah. we are not. Yeah. 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 Fireball, what a great name the Fireball is though, for yeah. a ukulele. I mean, yeah. that's... Yeah. If there's one ukulele to me that's really kind of captured everyone's imagination over the last couple of years, it was the Fireball. I think it did the Fireball win a UK award last year. I think it did. Yeah, flight one. Did. In flight, multiple. flight one, multiple <laughs> UK awards. Yeah. My favourite award being the category that only had flights, <laughs> yeah. which is what you guys voted for. Yeah. It was nothing to to do yeah. with us, but. Um, <laughs> You know that that was amazing. Yeah. Um, so we got like a Spitfire yeah. coming up, maybe, or like a tornado. Yeah, we should, we should next one. But we have a Nomad and a Navigator coming. Oh, soon. okay. Yeah. Right, we are we're coming towards the end of this, but we're going to do some quick fire questions in a minute as well, aren't we? So I can't read that anymore. My <laughs> shall I read going. it for you? Yes, go on. Um, what's the most interesting place you've either seen someone with a flight or you've sold a flight to? In a, like a place I saw, ah, where we saw. Um, I think there's been like some customers on like some remote islands. Ooh. Yeah, there is uh, like a store on Tenerife that ah. plays flight. And there's been some quite, uh, some other islands, pretty much, do you maybe remember? <laughs> the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Just to the audience. Uh, we had some charity in Africa, yeah? Yeah. In, oh, wow. Yeah, there were like some, cool. yeah, some yeah. Africa. Um, charity that purchased some flight ukuleles from us. Ah, uh, not purchased, sorry, we donated. 
<laughs> Char- yeah, African charity that we donated the ukuleles to. And yeah, just some remote ar- islands like near Australia. Oh, that's like cool. islands like Vanuatu. Oh, wow. Yeah, stuff like that. Wow. Amazing. Um, has, has flight... I keep using the words taken off. <laughs> has the success of flight... Has that surprised you? Is it was it always your plan to build into the company that you now are? Was that kind of the plan early on from the beginning, or because I mean, you're you're up there with all of the big names in the ukulele world now. Like yeah, I think definitely, it's, I think it surprised us. Yes. Yeah. We were not not planning for that. We would like just happened. Yeah. I guess. When did you realize? By itself, I think we. Started realizing around 2018, 19. Mm. Um, the thing is, like at the beginning, we didn't even have models for like more experienced players. We just had like pretty basic yeah. lineup. But our marketing was so strong that we had actually our <laughs> like growth started from going to the festivals and talking to the people and seeing what instruments they want to represent because Mm. we realized okay if we want to work with that and that person then yeah we need to up our game so that was first thing and second one some we got an email saying i love your brand do you make any tenor ukuleles in that price range and then we're like we don't and then we developed victoria model which was our test into the more higher end market Mm. i would say and it was extremely successful it really put us on the map yeah. um and we were not expecting the sales because we it's like around 300 mm. euros ukulele and we were thinking like how many of the those can you sell because back in those days um mo- majority of the sales they were like like a pyramid so you would have the cheapest ukuleles like uh, the yeah. the widest yeah, part yeah. of it and then you had the, yeah. the most expensive ones up here so you would sell the most quantity of the cheaper stuff but now it's almost like reversed for us yeah um so yeah that's yeah. pretty amazing to see because there is like so many other brands in the in the beginner sector yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but there is not so many brands that actually do what we do the middle to like higher yeah. end um so yeah we kind of started doing that from Victoria and then grew and then introduced more models, introduced more models. We feel like we are like one of the few brands that really focus on the ukulele and don't mm. just go to China and stick their names yeah, yeah, yeah. on the headstock and order like yeah. big quantities. Well, I, I was going to say, why do you think, um, what do you think has made flight stand out and get you to where you are? Because, you know, you got to a position where you released your 10th anniversary series, yeah. which were really top end yeah. ukulele is still not at the price of some other top end ukuleles yeah. but we're rivaling them for playability and quality and and what what do you think makes you stand out um i guess it's like two parts to it mm. the first is um product we always check the market so we don't want to release something and say and people say oh we can get that similar thing from yeah. someone else at a cheaper price so we always check that it's unique and that it's priced competitively we don't want to be like this brand who does overpriced yeah. things and then secondly is like our marketing and the team that we built so we have all these amazing artists that are supporting yeah. us and it really makes us stand out because if you think about it like even the more established bigger brands mm. that probably sell in bigger quantities than us they don't have as many artists or endorsers representing them or yeah i don't want to say who want to work with them but yeah (laughs) yeah who want to work with them (laughs) (laughs) yeah because also your ukuleles have to be on the yeah on that level yeah Yeah. Yeah. for for me uh, it's an interesting question because i've got my own views on what it is and for me it's the quality control coming out of of where you manufacture like we've never had and i'd tell you if we had but we've never had what i would call a bad flight i i think the the quality that like say of, of the instrument i think stands out i think the design element stands out for me yeah. because you know it's a flight even without the gig bag <laughs> straight away yeah. particularly with the um the open headstock which yeah. has become your kind of yeah. 
patented. signature a little bit. Patented but design. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's sweet, actually. Yeah. Patented. Well, ah. it's, but it's, you know straight away it's a flight. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, anyway, that was my take on it. Thank you. So if you weren't CEO of Flight, what yeah. would you be doing? What did you want to be when you were little? <laughs> That's a really tough question. Kevin wanted to be a fireman's hairdresser. I did. Really? That's it's <laughs> yeah. It's not a thing. I, I wanted to be a dancer. Oh. I, know, I think so, but yeah, it's kind of um I guess very you have to start like super young. Yeah. To get there. Even so. after you little what cuz I mean, we do do our research on yeah. this show, don't we? Oh, I do, you don't do much. <laughs> but um, so you went to university in this country, is yeah. that right? Edinburgh. London Met. Oh, yeah. but she used to go to Edinburgh all the time. <laughs> yes. I was going to say was... it wasn't Edinburgh. No, She'd just sorry. been in Edinburgh. Yeah, yeah. Edinburgh was like your place that you went to when you were at university. Yeah, but I was stressed then. I was yeah. like, I need to get out of London. And then it was, uh, yeah, just a train ride. But then as a similarity to another business that we do, yeah. you went slightly into the music business from there, is that right? Actually, my degree was the music and media yeah. management. So the whole degree was about like managing a band. Right. So we learned like really cool stuff. I, yeah. mean, I still remember my university and I'm like, <laughs> I need that degree. I, I wonder how it m much it's changed, but we were learning about music industry, the BPI, <laughs> all the fun stuff. But it was like yeah. 2006, seven, so it's like completely different now. Yeah. They were like just thinking, oh, there's so, so much pirate mu pirated music. How is it going to be in the future? And then like our lecturer like basically predicted the price of like the streaming services but yeah. he, s he thought it was gonna be like a paid subscription to your broadband right he thought yeah. the broadband companies would be giving bpi like a percentage yeah. and then everyone would have like a flight fee to listening yeah. to whatever they want but yeah so that he was a strange period of time wasn't yeah. it because like you've got you'd had napster who were just yeah. illegally giving everything away yeah. and then it was the start of yeah. yeah sort of streaming but um yeah and we were analyzing all the cd sales and all the yeah, um, yeah record sales and yeah lots of different stuff we had like a module just on music videos another module just on touring another module of music production with cubase and stuff like that so oh, yeah really cool. interesting but stuff. then the ukulele came along yeah the ukulele, <laughs> the ukulele came right. along and i started um, selling because i'm thought of that but, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it helps me like that knowledge that i acquired yeah. there especially like uh, music law we had yeah. like a whole module in that and contract law yeah and yeah things like that they still come out because like i yeah. understand like i see that a lot of people still don't have understanding of what is like publishing rights yeah. what is music recording rights what is like rights to the music what are the rights to the lyrics um, and how yeah. that works but i have yeah, thanks yeah. to my union it's, i have the understanding of it's, that. it's like a lot of people in the publishing world i think people that watch our channel know that we we publish as well and yeah. a lot of people in the publishing world don't understand the rights yeah. <laughs> even yeah. for some fairly big companies yeah. and it's it's yeah. amazing we had a very good lecture and he explained yeah. everything in like in detail and i like still yeah still remember it and it really helps because we work with a lot of artists and so i can yeah. i'm able to like and you are in the music business yeah like yeah. 100 percent. So in a way yes yeah well it's it yeah. definitely is it's you know yeah, so, it, so it helps just uh Cool. Yeah, so I guess that would be my like career that I wanted to do. But actually, I wanted to do more with electronic music. Mm -hmm. So like they would give us coursework, like set up, like write how you are um, organizing a gig. And my gig would be like a techno party. <laughs> 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 so like everyone would be writing. So the band arrives and, you know, there is a sound check and I'll be like the DJ arrives. You know, <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but awesome. that was like, yeah, that was my teenage years. Oh, uh, awesome. Love I've that. outgrown that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we should go into Dead Arts. Yes. Yeah. Um, so dare darts. We throw darts at the dartboard. There's quick fire questions. You have to answer them pretty much immediately. Sam, Bongo Boy will read them. I'll read it. Um, have you ever played darts? Yeah. Oh, okay. In which case, you can throw your own darts if you like. Okay. Oh, okay. Ooh, what we so, got? Thirteen. 13. Sam. Favorite ukulele YouTube channel. Of course, the other. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Strangely enough, everyone says that when they play Day of Dust. <laughs> Go on, next start, next start. Oh, I have to. Oh. 12? 
Favourite ukulele. Uh, <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, how good are you at keeping secrets? Ooh. Oh. No, this this a question for the, for the studio guest. A six, six. Okay. guy. <laughs> I talk a lot. <laughs> Does that depend on how many shots you've had? Yeah, that is wrong. Well. <laughs> I tend to overshare sometimes. Right, next up. Five. Uh, is yeah. Favorite place to play or maybe to watch music. Favorite place to play is the couch, but uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, to watch is uh, probably like at some venue, I guess. What? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. I'm going to throw some darts yeah. now. Okay. <laughs> and it's twenty. Forfeit. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, one. One. Number one. What's your favorite song lyric? Oh. Mm. My favorite song. <laughs> that's like the first thing that came to my mind. I like the Doors. Don't you love her? Because like when he sings it like sounds so at the beginning of the yeah. like don't you love her madly? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> oh, like that's that. a good one. Cool. Yeah. Um, as I did get twenty as well, which is a forfeit, then we have to have a forfeit for Juliana. And the forfeit is that we would like. Now, is it the ultra that you print? Yeah. The top side. We would like an anarchy in the ukulele ultra ukulele. Oh, I've got the forfeit. That's for forfeit. Yeah, we can discuss. <laughs> 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 Always um, the business. We can woman. discuss yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I will say we did talk about this at Cheltenham. So <laughs> 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 that's for forfeit. Um, thank you so much. There's only one thing left to do, oh, and that is to talk is about the thing that we're doing. Juliana's brought an able oh. assistant, oh. <laughs> who's not an assistant, yeah. but in this capacity is an assistant. Okay, yes. I'd completely forgot about that. Right, do you, want to, do you want to tell everybody what we're doing? So we thought, what better way to test a travel ukulele than to make it a travelling ukulele? Ah, yes. A travelling ukulele. So I think we might have one just over here in the audience. It's just over here, but I can't reach it, so I think oh. the audience member probably <laughs> needs to bring it over. I just can't quite reach. <laughs> <laughs> Huge thanks to Pramesh Varant. You're also Varant, aren't you? I was like, <laughs> you looked at me oddly then, um, for bringing us this beautiful travel uke and joining us. We did try and convince him to come on the interview. We're not we horrible people, but he <laughs> <laughs> preferred to sit on the sofa and uh, direct. Yes. Next yes. time. Yeah. Next yeah. time. So this is our new Friday show feature. So this is a flight travel geek, and um, Juliana didn't know about this, but we we got hold of one of these, and we have um, we've put a tracker in there. Installed a little spyware. We've installed a tracker, so we can see wherever it goes. We're going to hand somebody this at our gig tomorrow night. No, I'd just like to be clear. We can see where it goes in that we can track it. We can't see you. We're not. No. It's not got a camera <laughs> in it or anything inappropriate. It's not that spyware, but we can see it. Just bear in mind, wherever you go with it, we will know. Um, but we're going to give it to somebody at our gig on Saturday night. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. And there's a game to be played here where whoever has it can win points for how many miles it goes in the following week. But at the end of the following week... You have to hand it to somebody new that is willing to take it somewhere else. So you get points for how many miles it's travelled from one week to the next. We'll, we'll set like a time limit when we give it. So we'll say like midnight on Saturday night or something like that is where, where we're going to check up on it. And then um, there's also there's bonus points. Shall we give, we'll give points for how many miles it goes, but we'll give... A bonus point at the end of 300 points. For the most famous person yeah. to play this little beaut. Yeah. So you have to send us either a picture or a video of um, a famous person playing it. And um, Also, if you get this ukulele, so if it comes into your hands over the next 12 weeks, then send us a little video clip and we'll put it on the show on a Friday night. Um, but we're going to see where it ends up. So we've installed the tracker. Uh, it's going tomorrow night. And we don't know where it's going. We're just going to, in our gig, we're going to say, tell people the story of what it is and who wants to take it. And then we're just going to give it to a random person 
And we're going to see where it goes. Everyone who touches it. Everyone who touches it is going to sign it. We're going to send a Sharpie with it. Um, I'm hoping it can get somewhere really far. I want Australia. Okay. Australia, Canada, Brazil, somewhere like that. I think would be amazing. We're going to keep tabs on it every Friday. So we'll, we'll update you every week where it is. And at the end of it, we will get it sent back to us. And maybe we'll do an auction or a raffle for charity or something. And uh, we'll give it away. And it might, you never know, it might have some famous signatures on it. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, who knows? So Amazing. that's that's our new segment. Um, I don't think we've got a name for it yet. What's it called? The Travelling <laughs> <the traveling, laughs> Ukulele. Traveling ukulele. Yeah. yeah, it'll have its own theme tune and everything I had by a next really, week. I had a really good... Can you go to Trello? I've got a really oh, good did, blurb. Yeah. You did have a blurb. Introducing Uke's Global Journey, the heartwarming new feature where one adventurous travel ukulele embarks on an epic mission to visit as many countries as possible. Passed from person to person, this tiny instrument will traverse the globe, connecting cultures and creating music wherever it goes. Each week, follow the ukulele's journey through new hands as it inspires spontaneous performances, heartwarming stories and unexpected friendships, proving that music truly is the universal language. That's got AI written I wrote all that over all it. <laughs> <laughs> Huge thank you to both of you for joining yeah. us. Thank you. Uh, should we go and eat? I'm, I'm eating myself. I'm yeah. starving. <laughs> Thanks, guys.